What's up, guys? Kunal here, Bulls on Wall Street. Happy hunting. Hopefully, everybody had a great day. The market is gone. Berserka, we are up, give or take 10% uh, in the last handful of days. And everything is ripping. It's what we call a line drawers market, where you draw some lines on some charts and... Things go higher, and you're like, whoa, I must be really good at this, right? And you get a few months of the year where it's like this, and so it's good to capitalize and, you know, do what you can because it's literally that kind of market. It doesn't stay like this, so just be mindful. Let's talk today about where the indexes are and where we can go, and then, of course, let's kind of go into the watch list. I'm going to have a little bit of a shorter watch list because – I think, you know, we're kind of getting into some extended territory where your watch list is going to look abnormally large. I mean, it's just going to look huge. But I think, um, man, I mean, I went through my scans and it was like hundreds of good looking stocks. Right. So we can't really roll with that. So a couple things I want to just mention. We are at a, a 94 stochastics in the market. Stochastics is a measure, just one of many measures of overbought, oversold. Uh, like MACDs and so on and so forth, different oscillators. That's one measure of overbought, oversold. I use Bollinger Bands as a, another way to measure overbought, oversold in terms of just how far a particular market is stretched. You know, and so like, you know, you kind of tend to hang out inside uh, the range of the Bollinger Bands as you're kind of moving in normal volatility. So, but when you start to kind of break out of it, you're starting to get into some expanded zones, right? So we're triggering an overbought reading. And look, we've been overbought for a few days. So you can stay overbought for long periods of time. So that doesn't mean anything in itself. But we're also now, you know, completely outside the upper Bollinger Band. And then, you know, kind of the third sign. And this is a little bit more layman's. But, you know, if I can fit two thumbs, just literally two thumbs, two, you know, normal size thumbs, not like a blacksmith's thumbs or, you know, something like that, <laughs> right? But just two normal, like, Indian thumbs, even, you know, like a, a New Yorker or something like that. Um, I think, you know, if you can fit two thumbs between price and 90, you're getting extended. It doesn't mean the bull market is over. I'm talking about for tomorrow and maybe the next day. Granted, some of the markets closed on Wednesday. So, <laughs> you know, we'll see what that all that's all about. But we're there. So tomorrow's game plan. You know, if the market opens weak, say we open down here. The market probably just ripped back. That's what it's been doing. All the dips are getting bought. But if by just happy-go-lucky standards, if the market gaps up tomorrow or has a slightly up and then like kind of pushes into you know the morning, it sets us up for a nice one-day rug. You know, the 9 EMA is at 472. We're at 485. So what if we got to like 490, right? It gives 20 points here. It's about you know 4% into the 9 EMA. That's a lot on an index. And so I think that's the game plan for tomorrow. So even though every stock looks good <laughs> and they're running, you want to be careful for tomorrow because when everything looks good, oftentimes things can get nasty. And this was the trend of trends. I mean, I don't have much to say about this, you know. Like, look at the freaking options pricing on some of this stuff. It's like, you know, QQQs are up. You know, they go <laughs> 10X. You know, you're sitting here at 23 cents on these 482s, and it's like, you know, you take this flag breakout or something, and it's like, hot dang, like, right? Like, you have all of this, you know, action that's happening. And so you want to just be really, that's this, it's just incredible range, right? So we're into it. Press it as long as you can. But we just have to be careful that we are getting into some uh, territories. If we gap up, we take this market down, all right? That's just the nature of the game. If we gap up, we take this market down. If we don't gap up, then, you know, we're going to come in and kind of long things and do all of that kind of stuff. So top of the list, if we gap up, you know, I think is this, you know, MU. This one's, you know, about $10 off. It's 9 EMA. I think that's an, uh, it's just an easier trader than NVIDIA for me personally. I wouldn't say it's parabolic or anything. It's just a trade. You know, I think it's just easier to trade than, you know, NVIDIA. But NVIDIA had its first kind of down day. So this is another one, right? Like where it's like, you know, if we get a strong open and then we fade off it, you know, double top or something at 133, I think we could take something like that down, right? 
And if we need to, you know, we have this like AVGO, right? And this is probably a little bit more expensive, but you got one day, two day, three day, four day, five day, six day, seven days. If it gaps up tomorrow and you're on a day eight, then uh, you've got to take this down for moral reasons, right? Uh, July 4th is coming. Like we've got to go in and show these stocks what American justice looks like. And I think we're going to get the gap up in some of these. You know, you don't, you can't read too much in after hours action. It's always a fugazi, but right. You can see this MU's pushing a little bit and, you know, you're getting all of this kind of stuff. So those are the ones that I want to short, right? And then, so I'm going to keep it just real short. Ha <laughs> ha, get it, pun intended. Now, uh, if we need shorts, we just want to take down a couple semiconductors. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Beyond that, you know, there's a lot of good-looking longs if the market opens weak. This Dell, you know, what we want to do is find stocks that just started moving. This Dell, I mean, if it gets over this gap fill spot, I mean, it's going to, you know, it's got the boots and the coots right here. 145 is just a huge spot, guys. Test, test, test. Right into the gap. You're right in the bone zone right now. Like, that's a good-looking, God-fearing Christian stock right there, you know. Uh, Wolf Nation. You know, I was posting this a little bit earlier on the twatter, but uh, 417 was a, 420 was a big breakout. Damn, big ripper, right? This is how you want your stocks to look, right, into boxes. So week open on this. I think that one looks good. CLSK, right, broke its range today. I think if it can take out this 20, you're going to see a speed up in this bad boy. Let's keep an eye on that one. Palantar, big push over here. You're starting to get into, let's pretend. So look, we're RTs as traders, right? Let's pretend that this thing here never happened, all right? Let's take that out, and you just have this right here. The 25 is a spot, baby, ain't it? That 25 is a spot. So any kind of, if we get a week open tomorrow, I probably want a red to green, this Palantar. Look at the range on this. You know, you got to do probably calls on this because it's ATR is only a buck. But, dude, you go in, you know, if we get a week open, you go in 25, 50 calls, they'll be dirt cheap, right? And, you know, these things can go from five cents to, you know, 50 cents sometimes when you nail them. Like, that's the cool thing about this stock. So it's got enough range, but let's um, let's add this for a week open, too. And then I think the last, I got two more. SMCI, right, had a really nice push. Gave some, it ran into the top of the Bollinger Band, and so just pulled back. That's, you know, almost always the case, the first kind of test of this in quite some time it just loosens it up a little bit but this is you know prime time for tomorrow and then you know qualcomm broke range today too man i had this i was so focused on this thing in the morning dipped down took my hands off took my eye off of it <laughs> Whoop! you know there we go on this bad boy let's look for a week open on this one and, and let's shred guys dude if you guys are trading options man Levi's been just crushing in our options room. Dude, he was he had the Tesla 185s, the Tesla 200s, buying them today, right? So this is, you know, it's not like, you know, he's been holding these for a while. He's been buying these things today. Same thing with SMC, 100% gain, you know, on his lottos. Like, this is just, man, that's about as much heat as you can see in one particular day. So big ups to Levi. Guys, we have a free trial for our options trading room. You guys got to get into that room and check it out, man. This guy's on fire. He's just a fantastic trader. He's been with us for a while, first as a student, now as a mentor. And, uh, you know, he runs classes and does stuff just like me. So, guys, let's just recap all of this, right? We want to short some semis, the extended ones like MU and AVGO, if we get the gap up. We'll add in some NVIDIA, and we've got kind of some uh, decent looks that we want to do. Or we could just do the index on the QQQs, right? If we get weak open, I want to hit Qualcomm. I want to hit SMCI. I want to hit Pelantar and, and maybe some of these crypto stocks. And, you know, Bitcoin's like still just sitting at 66,000, and these things are still looking like they want to break out. So that's a good sign. So let's um, shred on those. Guys, be careful, and then don't forget Dell. Love Dell, right? It's 1996, baby. We're going to the moon on Dell. I love you guys. Peace.